All right, welcome back. So we've set up our env file. Uh, we've set up our Docker uh, initialization script for Postgres, um, which included our domain entities, as well as uh, some plugins, Vector and PG Crypto. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close the init file. Now it's time to build our one of our most important files, which is going to be the Docker Compose. All right, so you're going to click outside of the into the root directory, um, and we're going to add a file, a new file. And we're going to name that docker-compose.yaml. Okay. All right. So here uh, we're going to start out with services. Okay. So we define all of our services here. Uh, the first one is our backend, so Postgres. Okay. Uh, what we'll do is say image, and that image we can set, use the latest PG vector, PG vector. Again, if you have different versions of the image um, for PG vector, uh, feel free. Uh, I'm using PG at the time of this recording, 16. Okay. Um, all right, that's going to be our image. Uh, we're going to have a container name. So in this case, for this service, the container name is going to be just Postgres. All right, and then we'll have an environment variable. So here, I'll go ahead and oops, remove this, and we'll say Postgres uh, DB. And we're going to grab... So again, we're going to grab some of these from our env file. So we can say dollar sign uh, Postgres underscore db. Okay, uh, I'm going to just copy copy these two more times here. All right. So we'll next have a Postgres a user. Okay, and uh, again we can copy that Postgres user, and then finally Postgres password. All right, so we have our Postgres uh, database, username, and password. Okay, again, that was defined in our .env. All right, so for this service, um, for Postgres, uh, we'll have ports exposed. Ports, okay. And we're going to say, um, in this case, a dollar sign. And that's going to be, grab the port, from again, from our env, so everything's configurable. Uh, port. And then we'll say 5432. Okay, again, that's the default port, Postgres. Uh, we'll set up some volumes here. Okay, so volumes. And we'll have PG data. Okay, and some of these are just default standards here. So Postgres SQL data. And then we'll have dot for our initialization script that needs to run, we'll have an entry point here. So we'll say forward slash Docker. Okay, uh, Postgres init docker entry point, entry point init db dot d. All right, so this will kick off our initialization script. Okay, so as part of the service, we'll add a health check here. So health check, okay, uh, let me start to remove some of these. So this is by default. So we'll say uh, cmd uh, shell. Uh, what we'll do is we'll say pg is ready uh, minus u. That's going to be our username for Postgres. Dollar sign Postgres uh, user. I like how VS Code auto completes all this. Okay, um, and then minus d, and then we'll have the database name. So that's going to be dollar sign, and that's going to be Postgres DB. Okay, so that's going to be our Test uh, health check test command shell. Okay, interval. We'll just make that every five seconds. Again, feel free to change all these all these defaults here. Uh, timeout five seconds, and then retry. Let's just make it twenty. Okay, and I'll get rid of start period. All right. So we've defined our Postgres service. Okay, the very next service. So again, uh, Postgres is going to hold our data as as um, you know, our domain entity data, as well as our uh, vector embeddings data, right? Now, um, this is, again, a distributed app, all right? So, um, you know, I, I, I personally uh, enjoy using RabbitMQ. So, you know, it's, uh, again, um, feel free to use Kafka or, uh, you know, any other, you know, message broker and service bus, things like that. So I'm going to use RabbitMQ for this course as very popular. Okay, so I'm going to set up our RabbitMQ uh, service in our Docker Compose. Okay, so we're done with the Postgres 
Docker Compose setup. Now our next service is going to be RabbitMQ. Okay, uh, move the mouse. Okay, RabbitMQ. So let's define that. So image, it's going to be Rab. We're going to use the latest image at the time of this recording. So RabbitMQ, uh, as well as the management. So three dash management. Okay, and then the container name is going to be RabbitMQ. Okay, and then we'll expo expose some uh, ports. So here we're going to have, uh, in this case, quotation mark, and we'll say dollar sign RabbitMQ port. Again, these are coming from our ENV variables, right? So, and then uh, the default port there is 5672 for AMQP, and then um, we'll also create a expose a port for our management UI. Okay, so we'll have a dollar sign in rabbit mq and that's going to be management mgmt port okay and again the default for that is 15672 so 15672 and i'll bring up the rabbit mq management plugin uh once we launch all of our docker services so uh now our environment variables uh we're going to have and let me remove the default here and we'll say rabbit mq uh default user user and that's going to be again bringing it in from our env variable file dot env so rabbitmq default user there it is okay i can copy this one more time here for the password okay uh so this is going to be let me go to the end here oops it's going to be the password we call it pass and this is also going to be default pass all right so that should take care of our RabbitMQ service, okay? All right. Uh, remember, we have our backend Postgres, we have RabbitMQ as our message broker, and then we have our core API, which is going to be in uh, .NET, um, which, again, is going to be, you know, publishing to RabbitMQ. Um, it's going to, you know, serve the API base for our front-end React app, okay? Um, and uh, so our next service is going to be uh, the core API, okay? So core API. So we'll go ahead and finish off RabbitMQ. We'll say core API, okay? Uh, build, it's going to be core API. Again, I'm using .NET uh, 8 for the latest, all right? Uh, .NET Core 8. We'll have container name, uh, container name. It's core API, okay? Uh, now, this is an important one, depends on, okay? So we're gonna say uh, this service, core API, remember, it can't run unless, what? Um, both Postgres and RabbitMQ are up and running, right? So we'll say Postgres and the condition on that, condition, all right, service is healthy, okay? So we'll use the service healthy, right? And then uh, RabbitMQ, we wanna make sure that's also alive. So condition there, again, will be service healthy. Sorry, service started. So uh, Postgres is healthy and RabbitMQ has started. Okay, and then, so that's our dependency section. Okay, and then now our environment section. So environment, and I'll again, get rid of these guys here. And what we're gonna do is set up ASP.NET core URLs, okay? And we'll say HTTP, and that's going to be plus 8080, okay? All right, that's our ASP.NET Core URLs, okay? And then we're going to have a rabbit URL, URL, okay? And that's going to be dollar sign rabbit MQ. Do I have that? No, I don't. So rabbit MQ URL, okay? And then we'll have one more here, cores. Uh, allowed origin, okay, and then we'll have a dollar sign web origin. So this is for the course part of it, right? Okay, uh, and then for core API, this can be exposed on certain ports. That's gonna be 8080, okay? So we'll say uh, 8080, 8080, Okay, perfect, so that's our core API. Again, very simple has two dependencies there. Um, it's basically a .NET core API, okay? Um, finally, the 
uh, the AI processing unit in our architecture is going to be our AI worker, which is going to be running in Python. Okay, so it's going to be able to talk to OpenAI and um, make API calls to OpenAI, right? So we'll have now our AI worker. Okay, move the mouse there for you. All right, so I'm going to scroll down a bit. So AI worker, uh, again, build. Um, we're going to say forward slash AI worker. Oops, AI worker. Okay, and oops, go back. Sorry, container name. All right, uh, it's going to be AI worker. All right, and then again, depends on. So we'll have a depends on section here, and we'll say Postgres. Um, again, condition. And that condition is going to be service healthy. Okay. Uh, and then RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ. And that again, the condition there is uh, condition. Um, uh, service started. So again, service started. Okay, so that's for RabbitMQ. And then we'll have a envir the environment variable. So environment. Okay, in this case, we'll have a database a URL. So this is our Postgres database. So we'll have our dollar sign database URL. Okay, uh, we'll have our RabbitMQ URL. Okay, and that's going to be our Rabbit. MQ URL. Okay. What else? Well, there's the AI worker. Uh, it's talking to OpenAI, so it's going to need the OpenAI API key. So OpenAI API key. Okay. Again, dollar sign, and then that'll be OpenAI API underscore key. Okay. And then we'll define a web origin for this as well. So in case it needs to cross services so web origin again dollar sign and that's gonna be web origin okay all right this AI worker is going to be default in Python which is going to be exposed on port 8000 so we'll say ports and uh, here we're going to say 8000 thousand eight thousand okay all right uh, almost there all right just hang in tight so we have uh, so far Postgres backend, uh, we have a RabbitMQ, and then we have a core API has two dependencies, Postgres and Rabbit, uh, and then our AI worker, uh, which also has, um, uh, be careful of the spacing here. So again, I didn't space this, let's just move that over. Okay, that's why uh, the autocomplete wasn't working. All right, so uh, I'm gonna save this file. So uh, make sure the, tabs or spacing is correct in the Docker Compose, okay, uh, before we run that. So AI Worker uh, is done. All right, so we have our final service, which is our front end. All right, so our front end, of course, uh, it's going to depend on our core API and .NET and then our AI Worker as well, okay. So uh, this is going to be our React app. So React app, let me move the mouse, sorry. Okay, so our React app, this is going to be build. Dot React app, all right, container name, it's going to be React app, um, environment, get rid of uh, these guys here, and we're going to have our byte core, so we're going to be using React byte uh, core API base URL, okay, that's going to be HTTP, again, within uh, Docker, it's going to be localhost 8080. And then we'll have our, um, again, Vite AI worker base URL. That's going to be HTTP, again, localhost port 8000. Okay. All right, ports exposed. Uh, so React by default will run on port 5173. So 5173, 5173. Okay. And then this, could, again, dependencies. So this service, the front end service or front end app is going to depend on core API. So core API and AI worker. All right, perfect. So uh, after our service, we'll just set up a section for volumes. Okay. Um, and we have one, which is PG data. 
All right, so uh, long video, but this is a uh, heart of our Docker setup here, uh, the Docker Compose YAML. Um, again, high level, we have our Postgres service, our RabbitMQ broker, .NET Core API, our Python-based worker, AI worker, and then finally our front-end React app. 